Okay, welcome back everybody. My name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Triple Crown Pillars of Eternity. I just realized that uh, the reliquary is not that door for some reason. I thought it was, but it's not. I took a look at a map quickly and I was like, oh, okay. So it's not a bug or anything. I'm just going to take a drink of water and we'll get underway. It's way too warm in my house lately. Of course. I had the worst sleep last night. Oh. I'm, I was actually really grouchy most of the day because of the shitty sleep I had. It was must have been like 30 degrees in my room Celsius, of course, because we live here in the metric system. And uh, I was just sweating, no sheets on because I couldn't even stand it, and I still couldn't cool down. I had my windows wide open. Ugh, it was just awful. Hopefully tonight will be a little bit cooler. Not likely, though. And uh, we're going to very carefully make our way around this way. We might have to kill some groups on the way. I'm here. I can't remember if there are any enemies on our way to the reliquary, but this is the f easiest way to get there. The safest way to actually. Yes. I'm here. Uh, you can't see my air quotation marks, but that's what I meant by safest. Well. Every way in this temple right is here. a little bit dangerous, but if we can sneak past the main rooms, we should be okay. Yes. I'm here. All right, this is going okay. This is not the right room. Yes. This will lead down to another area. An area okay. where we are not going currently anyways. We're going to head over here. Everything seems to be going okay so far, so good. Well, so I'm far here. so good, everybody. Okay, this is the only turn that I'm unsure of. Can't remember if there's an army guarding the reliquary or not. Not. Yes. Look at that. I'm here. Awesome. All right. Well. So let's head up here. You must. And we're actually going to be able to finish up this quest and get um, Abaddon's Hammer finally, which is going to be so cool. So, so good. We have a big roleplay reedy thing to do in this video, so that's mainly what we're going to be doing. And it's going to be good times. It's going to be a burst of roleplaying glory. Now, you may recognize this as the top of the temple, which it is. It absolutely is. You can see down there, there are, well, there's nobody around. There shouldn't be anybody around. Yes. I'm here. And because we have the witness, we can open that. And look at that giant skull. You'll never guess who that is. Yeah. Or you might if you I'm watch here. my other Let's Play. Because, I mean, really. You already know then. It is the mighty corpse of a Sir. god. Abaddon. That's his body. Not even lying. That's exactly what it is. Dead god. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just gonna grab whatever loot we can. There is a chest down there that I kind of want, but oh. I don't think we're gonna go get unless we can get to the front of the keep without any significant problems, which is not really feasible. Yes. It's kind of hard to do, and I don't really want to die. What is it? We're gonna head on in. Everybody is gonna head on in. Looks like an armor case. It's very important for absolutely no reason, really. So. It is what it is. We're going to go talk to Abaddon's corpse. Lodged between rows of crystalline rock, a large fragment of metal protrudes. It looks as though it might be possible to pry it loose. Do it. At your touch, the splinter of metal begins to glow orange. Heat surges up your hands and arms and envelops you with such intensity you feel as though you are melting down. The heat spreads to the world around you and turns it orange, then yellow, then white, 
The ground, the sky, everything around you drips in molten globs and begins to take shape beneath you as if in invisible mold. You and the shard are the last things to melt and fall, and your addition to the molten pool completes the shape of an immense hammer. The metal cools quickly, as quickly as it has heated. Had heated. The handle is gripped now by two great leathery hands, and the hammer is cocked back over his shoulder as broad and mottled as a hilltop. The hammer whirls around and heaves or the wheel door whirls around and heaves the hammer, and you are flying upwards for what seems like ages into the airless blackness below or above. As you spin, you catch glimpses of a large rock, enough to be a moon. It is close, far too close to the world. The force of the impact shatters the hammer and stone alike. The rock is redirected outwards, but a section of the front face is cleaved off and begins to fall, splintering apart at the cracks. In a hundred thousand fragments blossoming outward in all directions, debris showers the atmosphere, trailing smoke and fire. Below, land and sea are far off, but gradually rising up. Now let's look to the land. Features are becoming clearer by the moment as you streak towards the earth. You are lodged in an enormous boulder, falling among the all other smaller fragments that heat and burst around you on all sides. Beneath you, snow-capped mountains rise up, dotted here and there by cities of stone and Adra. The impact will be the destruction of all of them. And the sea, the largest fragments, wide as a city, barrels down in a fiery cocoon. Its size reduces as the edges immolate, but it won't burn up in time. It lands silently in the distant ocean, sending a column of water skyward and radiating ripples that spread like wrinkles in fabric. Then the sound comes tearing up through the sky. It sounds like thunder. The shadow of your rock fragment is visible now, getting larger by the second. You are moments away from striking the ground when a massive shape throws itself in your path. The last thing you hear sounds like another rumbling impact, but that isn't what it is. It's a chuckle, relieved, breathless. You hear two words, made it. Everything goes dark. You open your eyes. The metal hammer fragment has come free, and you now hold it in your hands. It is warm to the touch. The air around you is suddenly turbulent, spiteful. A cold, damp wind whips your face. Salt crystals collect in your nostrils and the creases of your eyes. The floor below you becomes blue-gray and glassy, churning and rolling. And when you fall, you crash through water. A violent waves hurl and spin you. Something slithers around your ankles, seizes you with incredible strength, and drags you down into the silty depths. When the pulling stops, you are hovering at the center of an endless blue abyss. You can see neither surface, no floor. You seem to be facing downwards, but there is no way to be sure. A voice sounds from everywhere all at once, and the immense pressure wave of each utterance sends you reeling. Deceitful wretch! Grave robber! You who dig for that which you did not bury, speak! Explain yourself and be judged! I do what I must to survive. If I'm to be judged for it, so be it. No mortal is fit to decide whether he is worthy of survival. Your actions speak for themselves. The battery opened. The forge ignited. You conspired with souls that evaded my judgment. Saw them infused into the very thing they had stolen from me. The dwarves sealed their own fate. The forge was meant to be forgotten. And now, here you are again, denying peace to the buried. The turbulence around you calms, silt settles like a slow exhalation, exhalation, and the vast dark seascape beyond the murk fades in. Rays of light trickle down from far above onto green gold columns of kelp that rise from the depths and sway back and forth in the current. Fish and mollusks patrol them in groups of hundreds and thousands. The nearest pass you with watchful eyes. What are the bones of one god doing sealed in the temple of another? Do not play coy with a god, Watcher. I know you have seen his death. I feel it whenever a forgotten thing is taken from me. Abidin did not deserve to die here. This place, it was the least I could do to give his remains some privacy. The least you could do? The least I could do for ending his life. Light drains from your surroundings. The kelp forest has become a copse of black tendrils, copes, stark and twisted with regret. I call the moon down to me, Ioni brother. It was against his wishes. He would not listen to reason, would not listen to me. In his madness, he splintered the moon, but it was not enough. 
the greatest of the fragments still fell toward that which he would protect. In the end, he took position where it would fall and absorbed the impact himself. You make it sound as though you were the sane one. The other gods knew what had to be done, but they lacked the will to go through with it. Even gods have their attachments. To erase all knowledge of such a grand thing required unthinkable devastation. The Eastern Reach. Deadfire. Mine was the only solution. When I called down Ioni Brother, they remained silent. Even Abaddon. He knew it was for the best, but he tried to stop it all the same. Perhaps deep down I knew he would. I should have expected it. I could have stopped it. But why the temple? Why the secrecy? That time has been forgotten now, and so his death belongs to me. Everything he was before the impact. But you slew another god. Surely the other gods know this. Surely Abaddon must know. Current surges through the kelp bed, pushing each plant sideways like saplings in a hurricane, and propelling you backwards amidst a torrent of wayward fish. No! He cannot know! He must never know! Understand, he was not always as he is now. His body was not all he left behind. He was devoted to progress and industry from the beginning. But so too was he devoted to preservation. In those times he would let nothing go. Nothing could be forgotten. His will was iron long before his body. What was he trying to preserve? Time has finished much of what I started. I cannot tell you that, mortal, for fear of undoing all its costly work. Preservation, so that is why he went so far to oppose you. We agreed long ago, all of us, not to alter the course of Kith's civilization. Not directly. Not unless there were no other choice. But in this matter, there was no other choice. He understood that as well as anyone. It was for duty that he opposed it. I would have stopped it if I could, but by then it was too late. I want to ask you about something else. You may ask. The army that destroyed the dwarves, the Eyeless, are they yours? What the world casts aside, I take into my care. A thing may be forgotten, but it is never alone as long as I am here. They were lost children, abandoned, fixed on a purpose that no longer had meaning. I took them in. Gave them new purpose. I did not create them, but yes, they are mine. They are Abaddon's. I saw them forged. They were his once. I won't deny it. He created them as assistants to carry out his work on Aora. But he has long been the overseer of progress in the world. Leaving things behind has always been his way. I allow him to leave his past in my care so that it does not hold him back. You and Abaddon have a unique connection, then. I... I suppose we do. But then, the gods have always been able to accomplish far greater things when working together. Nearby, you see a shark pass through a school of fish. The fish scatter, evading the predator. Something Speak else to ask. Speak your mind. What new purpose did you give them? Some things that are forgotten must never be remembered. Not merely for the benefit of those who forgot, but for the entire world. There can be no second thoughts, no sympathy or stays of execution. The Eyeless were born to fulfill this task, though even their creator did not know it. They are single-minded and relentless. You mean they kill those who remember what you want forgotten? They do not flinch when called upon to do what is necessary. Kith owe them a great debt for the troubles they have hidden away. Something you else to ask. ask you. You say on one hand you had to call down Iani Rother, yet on the other that you would have stopped it for Abaddon. The death of a god is a calamity. You are living in the aftermath of one such death. Surely you can understand. 
You have said that sympathy can't get in the way. What about yours for Abaddon? He deserved better. Of all the other gods, he was the only one who acted, who held to his convictions. The goddess of relentlessness must have appreciated such a quality. I... yes. I admired him for that. But it's more than that. You loved him. The push and pull of the current becomes long and heavy, like a sigh. Whatever he was to me, it was not meant to last. Always our duty is to Aora first. I knew he opposed what I intended. That he would wish to preserve what I meant to destroy. I knew it would cause a rift that might never be mended. But I never imagined he'd go so far. I never imagined it would mean I would never know him, as I once did. If he doesn't remember dying, why not begin anew with him? Because it might cause him to remember. No, mortal. Better that we should exist as we are now. What happened once must never happen again. Bad enough that I am cursed to remember it. You may ask. Hmm. What do you mean the forge is meant to be forgotten? It was never meant for mortal use. Such power, such truths lie within it. It can bring only ruin. When the Pargrunin came to the White March, they were peaceful. They shared common beliefs and purpose. Their visions for the forge tore them apart. You have seen this for yourself. I have. They would have destroyed themselves in the end. How convenient that we'll never know. You need only look to the history of your own civilization for assurance. How many wars, how many fallen empires might have been averted if only their leaders could forget the objects of their ambition. That's I actually accurate. the loss of the Pargrunin. Misfortune brought them here. They did not deserve to end so soon. Why did you pull down Aeoni, brother? The great conundrum of a god is how close to become with your subjects. Too far and they lose hope. Too close and your own judgment fails. Civilizations are meant to ebb and flow. Allow them to persist for too long in power or knowledge, and you invite catastrophe. There was a time when we let our sympathies get the better of us. When memories were allowed to persist that should have been washed away, the other gods could not be moved to act. I did what had to be done without them. This is a dumb question because I already know, but you were too close to a civilization. Which do you speak of? I speak of what is forgotten. I failed that day, but my purpose was achieved in the end. It's the Inquithans. I will not dredge up the memory to satisfy idle curiosity. What does it matter if something is remembered or forgotten? It is in the past in either case. Memories are the spirits of the past. You of all people should know their sway on the present, Watcher. Great. More spirits? Mortals measure the worth of their lives in memory. Who will remember me? How long until I am forgotten? Memory governs every thought, informs every choice. It can fuel passion, understanding, love, or it can create obsession, madness. You have seen it plague many souls in your travels. I have. Consider the old watcher who inherited unspeakable crimes from birth. Or the young woman who committed herself to Brackenbury for love of things she remembered she had. Or the fisherman whose life became a sentence the day he killed his sister. Or the Glanfathen boy for whom an old medallion was worth more than all the fruits of his labors. They could be free from their burdens, if only they could forget. Their burdens exist for a reason. Why should they be allowed to forget? Many such people gain these burdens through no fault of their own. Others act to redeem themselves only to find their memories will not forgive them. Even when problems have run their course, memory can be the stone that sinks you into the abyss. 
I'm not sure I agree, but no matter. Your past has not overwhelmed you yet. Wait. Was there something else, mortal? I need you to call off the Eyeless. On the contrary, mortal. Their work must continue. Far too much was uncovered while they lay dormant. They draw attention to the very things you wish hidden. In my dreams, I have seen them swarming all over the Deerwood. Those who know too much of the White Forge will be washed clean from Aora. And then the Eyeless shall rest once more. This isn't some lone tribe of dwarves. The Forge sees visitors from all over now. The Eyeless will tear Deerwood apart. It will never be forgotten. The sea around you stirs back and forth, agitated, restless. Even if it is as you say, there is nothing that can be done. The Eyeless do not think for themselves. They have only the purpose that is given to them. They do not stop until the purpose is fulfilled. They will not change course now for me or anyone. I am sorry. Kauto said they could be called off. Only if those they pursue are no longer a threat. The Raid Sarens were stopped before they could take the White Forge. In your case, Watcher, you are well beyond that now. And if what you say is true, then the Deerwood is as well. This is your doing. You must intervene. The interventions of gods seldom work out in anyone's favor. Our touch is too heavy. The world crumbles beneath it. It is why we so often enlist the help of mortals. They execute our wishes with greater care. I have done far too much already. If you won't stop them, then I will. Your determination is commendable. But the eyeless number in the thousands. You will need more than strength or luck. I will sacrifice every life from Stalwart to Cadnoa if need be. Let us hope it does not come to that. I will give you what aid I can. I bade the eyeless to remain hidden when at rest. They are gathered in the hollow of a great rock, splintered from Eoni Brother. It lies in a flooded crater known as Cairn's Scar. Know, too, that they were built to answer the call of their master's hammer. When they hear it strike, they come to its aid. If you were to take that piece of his hammer from here and reshape it in Abaddon's forge into a likeness of the original, you might be able to call them to you. But destroying them would be another matter. I know of one way, but only from the center of the lion's den. Only with their master's hammer in your service. If you can do all this, if you can reshape what remains of Abaddon's hammer and bring it inside their lair, I can instruct you there on what you would need to do. I will do what I can. Uh, it would be easier if you told me now. Nothing I say will make sense until you see it for yourself, mortal. We share a common purpose now. I will see you through it when the time comes. Alright, I will remake the hammer in the White Forge and stop the eyeless. If you do not be assured, they will come for you as they did for the Pagrunen. An uneasy turbulence disturbs the calm like an unwelcome thought. Careful as you approach the lake. When I claimed the eyeless, I made sure they would not be discovered while they slept. Many of my most devoted followers stand watch there. They will not allow you near. Joy. And there is something far worse. Something more fearsome and dangerous than any eyeless. Let us hope you do not attract its attention. More dangerous? You can't just add that in there casually. In place of an answer, a sudden surge in the current from beneath you sends you hurtling upwards. The surface above you approaches fast, shifting and glimmering like quicksilver. You emerge soaking wet on the stone floor of the reliquary, reliquary gasping for breath as if you've been holding it for hours. Well, guys, now we can finally get our hammer. But first, we need to loot this chest. It's just important. There's armor. We can go into there. We can actually leave the area, I think, just straight there. Or we can go this way and just quickly check over here for anything neat. Because there might be something cool over here. Or there could be death over well. there, so it's kind of a toss-up. What's oh, a door? Well, I mean we could go in the door. 
I think it leads as you wish back into the temple though. Yes it does. Leads back into the, the Hall of Presence. So does that. I think this just leads down to the bottom over here. We don't really want to do that. Just in case there's, you know, enemies. Besides, we can just leave. Let's travel directly to the foundry in Durgan's Battery. I was one of those 77,000 fans that contributed Kickstartered. Totally worth it. There's, There are games that are not so good. I need to... Uh, There we go. Oh, we're at 25 minutes. I couldn't see what time we were at. So we can still make the hammer and the, the time allocated in the video. Incredible heat ripples upwards from the white forge and laps against your exposed skin. The fragment of Abaddon's hammer grows warm in your hands, as if in recognition. It is only a fraction of the size of the original, but there is enough metal to create a hammer fit for a person of your size to wield. In this forge, the fragment can be shaped anew. Do it. You call it to your mind every memory you have witnessed of the great hammer. The images coalesce into shape in your mind's eye. You know every curve, every engraving. Even as a shapeless lump of metal, you can see the fragment for what it is meant to become. The fragment is slow to heat, even in the white forge, and quick to cool as you work it against the anvil. Sweat drizzles down your body and puddles at your feet. Your arm grows sore with each swing of your forge hammer until you can barely lift it. Minutes turn to hours. As Abaddon's hammer begins to take shape, the ring of your own hammer against it takes on a familiar tone, one you have heard in your dreams. With each strike, an image flashes in your mind. It is hazy at first, but it gains detail as the hammer begins to resemble the original. Over time, the image becomes a frozen landscape centered around a crater lake. Eyeless patrol its frozen surfaces in droves, and this could be only be the place Andra described, Kirin's scar. The eyeless pause here and there when you strike and look up, as though hearing the echo on the wind. In the distance, as more details appear, you see other landmarks, Stalwart, Durgan's Battery, and you understand where the lake lies in the White March, where you must take this hammer. Finally, with the careful etching of the last detail with your chisel, the hammer is completed. No sooner do you make the final mark than you feel pure, radiant energy pulsing from within it, like a mechanical heartbeat. There is an indescribable beauty to the shape, and weighing or waiting end of the design, it feels as if this is the realization of the metal's purpose. You take up the hammer and its power rushes over you in waves, and it shakes your body so hard you nearly drop to your knees. The tremors pass, but the surge of power remains. The hair on your arm stands on end. In your hands, it is a faithful recreation of the divine instrument. Look at that. Oh yeah. It's not meant for him though. Looks cool. I wonder if it's bound to our main character. It would really kind of suck if that was the case. I've heard enough. The sounds of an argument reach you from the stairs. Darren marches into the room, arms crossed, while Wenger bounds along beside him. Wenger sees you and points enthusiastically. See, Darian, he'll tell you. We can stop him. Tension crackles in the air. Darian whirls and cuts Wenger off with a chopping motion. If he's seen them, he knows better. What's going on here? Something killed a whole crew of hunters out in the wood. Tore them apart like dolls, insects. Despite his steady posture, his eyes flit and flicker like flies, and his upper lip shines with sweat. I told ya! All we gotta do is get him in range of these cannons, and then we blast them! She brings her hand together in a good clap. We don't even know what they are! He shuts his eyes and breathes loudly through his nose. I do. Everyone turns to look at me. And if you want to live, you'll shut up and listen to me from now on. <clears throat> what, what's your plan for dealing with them exactly? Darian coughs into a fist. The eyeless are hidden at Karen's scar. I will face them there. Wengra and Darian gape at each other in disbelief. That lake's notorious. Folk never come back from that. She breaks off, her eyes suddenly wide. Oh. Now you get it. <clears throat> An awkward silence follows. Wenger clears her throat noisily. You know those heavy cannons you fixed might come in handy. She grins, a mischievous twinkle in her eye. And Darian starts to groan and holds up both hands. Hey, hear me out. 
Karen's scar should be just in range for those guns. You just point out your target and I'll do the rest. Okay. If those things are on the move, we don't have much time. If you're really gonna stop them, take this. It's the best of the ore we've pulled from Stalwart's mines. He gives you a solemn nod. It's not much, but it's good enough to make the old Pargrun and Smiths proud. Cool. Thank you, people, for your kind words and your ore. And we're going to give the hammer to somebody else. We got Heavy Blast, by the way. So we're not going to bind it to him, obviously. It's not meant for him. It is meant for him. Yes, I know that two added weapons require two slots. Thank you. Did I put that... Where did that sword go? Oh, it's right there. Okay. So we're going to have to respec him, obviously. But this starts out as legendary. And it has accuracy against the Eyeless, plus four might. It can destroy Eyeless on a critical hit. Grants ring, uh, grants ring of the Ancient Forge, one per encounter, which is a an AoE stun radius, which is good. Abaddon's Labor is also once per encounter, and it is a crushing damage attack. It uses a fatigue, though, like it gives you fatigue to use it. And we have to destroy the army at the Eyeless, or the Eyeless at the Karen Scar. It's already legendary and it's already plus four might, which actually isn't that that good all things considered because we have, um, what do we have that give him plus two might? I guess it gives him two extra might, which is pretty good. And actually those bracers can go to somebody else now and we can find him some other, it's not like the constitution helps him at all anyways, so we might as well get rid of that. Oh, it's, that four might is on top of the two might from this. So he's actually at 25 might. Okay, never mind. He can keep it with him because... It's extra might. Why not? Why wouldn't you? It would be silly not to. Alright. So we're going to have to respec this character to be better with that mace. Or warhammer, I guess I should say. Um, well, we'll do that between videos. And then in the next video, we're going to uh, continue on our way. So we have our new powerful Abaddon's warhammer. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's the other legendary weapon, by the way. There are two in the game, and there's one you can actually craft a legendary item, um, like an upgrade on a magical item. You can add a legendary thing to it. I will show you. What is it? Actually, what's her? Is ours mythic? Ours is mythic, and you can actually get this to mythic as well. Or is mythic worse? No, mythic's better. I think this can go up to mythic as well once it's fully upgraded. Um, but if you look at the enchant things, you can also get up to legendary. Uh, but you need a kraken eye, which of obviously course. we do not have. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be it. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. We will be, well, we will have our character changed up into a warhamming or hamming, or hammering, wielding guy, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we're gonna do. We should probably finish up the last of the bounties, and then um, maybe finish up the White March Part Two. Then we'll do the optional bosses. Or no, yeah, we should do. We should probably go appease the gods because they're worth a ton of experience. Then we'll do the optional bosses, and then we will kill um, the final encounter. We will go through. And kill Theos because we kind of left him there for a long time. So, yeah, take care, guys.